I am, without a shadow of a doubt, Team John Ambrose McLaren. He's smart, he's caring, he's handsome, he's funny, he's got good handwriting, he likes to debate, he likes to read, and he remembers everything. I am baffled that despite the perfection that is John Ambrose McLaren, Laura Jean would still choose Peter, but I digress. P.S. I Still Love You, a very fitting title for the second installment of the To All the Boys I've Loved Before series by Jenny Han, focuses on Laura Jean mending her relationship with Peter. No, God, please, no, no! It has been nearly four years since P.S. I Still Love You was released on Netflix, and while I did not watch it the night it was released, because apparently I wrote in my journal that I was binging Love is Blind at the time, I did watch it at some point after finishing binging Love is Blind, and I was baffled then as I still am now, four years later, as to why Laura Jean would choose Peter over John Ambrose McLaren. I still don't get it. I was honestly hoping that by reading the novel, I would get a better understanding as to why Laura Jean would choose Peter over John Ambrose McLaren, but it didn't. Rather, it confirmed that I can continue moving through the world knowing that Laura Jean made a poor decision in not choosing John Ambrose McLaren. Even saying his name brings me joy. <laughs> And after a few nights of giggling and sighing while reading the book, I can officially announce that book two is way better than the film. And the film is great. Same great chemistry between Condor and Centineo and a brilliant, let me repeat, a brilliant addition to the cast by Jordan Fisher playing the John Ambrose McLaren. Honestly, I could not put the second book down. If you watch my review of the first adaptation, you would know that the first book ended on such a cliffhanger that I immediately started reading the second book because I was driven to know what was going to happen so that I would not be tortured before bed. And that made me know at that point, within the first couple of pages of reading book two, that 100% the book was going to be better than the adaptation. I was hooked. The adaptation starts off in the most iconic way with Lara Jean lip singing to Then He Kissed Me by the Crystals. And what a fabulous nod to Adventures in Babysitting, the 1980s classic. So at the beginning of the adaptation, Lara Jean is riding the high of being a girlfriend for the first time, and we get to witness all of her firsts. But why the adaptation misses the mark for me is because it doesn't build up the tension or the anticipation of Laura Jean meeting, you already know, John Ambrose McLaren for the first time in years. I'm, I'm just going to call him Jam and Laura Jean LJ. Team Jam and LJ. Team La Jam. Stop it. Get some help. So in the novel, Han builds this beautiful possibility of what could have occurred had Jem and LJ been in a relationship together. A relationship where there is no ex-girlfriend drama, where there is no jealousy, where honestly there is no game playing. Just two long-term friends reuniting and having this really sweet and supportive friendship. And that relationship is also supported in the novel by Stormy, who was LJ's best friend at the nursing home at Bellevue, where LJ volunteers. In the novel, Stormy is Jam's grandmother and has been trying to set up Jam and LJ forever because, like me, she also thinks that they would make a really great couple. And since Stormy doesn't know that Jam and LJ have been friends since childhood, it creates this perfect mix of fate and circumstance that allows it to feel like such a beautiful, slow-burning flame that I'm just really excited to see turn into some sort of fire. But in the movie, everything just felt like it was developing so fast. And for me, in terms of the adaptation, the storylines felt too rushed. I think it was the day after LJ received Jam's letter that she immediately tells Peter. So we don't get to see her grapple with the tension of what it means to perhaps have these affections for Jam. And in the film, we never see her respond to his letter, which I thought was a letdown. So in the novel, they become pen pals, and not only is there this tension that's building up between them, we also get to learn a lot about who they are as well as their friendship. And another reason why I am Team Jam is because Peter asked for his gift back. When they started dating, Peter gifted Laura Jean this necklace that he knew that she wanted, and after they broke up, he asked for it back. That annoyed me so much. 
Whereas in the film, it's actually LJ who asks if he wants it back out of awkwardness. And the reason why I didn't like that scene is because it places the onus on LJ and makes it seem as if she's the insecure one. When, according to the novel, that whole situation occurred because of Peter's selfishness. And I will shout this to the mountaintops. Jan would have never asked for that necklace back. I will say that visually in the movie, it really was a well-shot scene. I did look it up thinking that it was in Portland only to realize that they filmed that scene in Vancouver at the Vancouver Aquarium. And then of course I had this epiphany that while the film is actually being set in Portland, the book actually takes place in Charlottesville, Virginia. Not that it mattered, but I was shocked for a moment that I didn't realize that there had been a change in the setting from the novel to the film. I was also disappointed that the adaptation removed the familial connection between Stormy and Jam. In the novel, they are grandmother and grandson, while as in the movie, they are not. I would venture to say that this is as a result of the race swapping that occurred when casting of John Ambrose McLaren, because in the novel, Jam is white, while in the adaptation, he is not. But I don't see why Jam couldn't be a part of a mixed race family in the same way that Laura Jean is. I actually think it would have been beneficial for them to both have that connection as well. But that's just me. Another instance where the book is far superior than the adaptation is in the reveal of the relationship of Mrs. Rothschild or, or Trina and Dr. Covey. Again, I felt like the adaptation rushed through the development of their connection while also removing Katie as a pivotal person who got them together. And LJ played a part of that romance too. And so I feel that the removal of Kitty and Laura Jean as a part of that storyline to be unfortunate because the family is so close and I felt like that storyline allowed us to continue to see that connection. Oh, and did you notice that Jenny Han made a cameo around minute 30? I actually really love when authors do that. Okay, so another reason why I prefer the novel over the adaptation is because the novel does a much better job at holding the tension between Laura Jean and Jen to the very end. In the movie, it's kind of hinted at that there will be some sort of reconciliation between them. LJ calls Jen to the treehouse. Jen admits that she also had the friendship bracelet put in the time capsule, but she hid it because she didn't want Laura Jean to know that that was something that she had hid in the time capsule. But for me, I felt like Han better understood that sometimes these friendships are not reconcilable. And so I felt like the unreconcilableness Irreconcilability of their friendship in the novel was just better handled. Not all friendships can be mended, and I felt that Han had a better demonstration of the reality of that. The novel also does a really great job at holding the tension between LJ and Peter as well. I mean, the movie does this, but it felt way more cheesy in the film than it does in the novel. And so in the novel, when they finally reconciled, it felt really romantic. Whereas when I was watching the film, I all of a sudden started thinking, wait, like, am I watching Twilight? Because all of a sudden they were kissing and then like being shot up to the sky. Like, are, are they floating like vampires? I, I, what's, what's, <laughs> what's happening? All this to say is that if you're partial about the series, just read book two. Now we only have one more adaptation to go and I will see you in the next video where I give you my review of adaptation three, Always and Forever, Laura Jean.